The assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Saad Din Al Uthmani, Head of Government of the Kingdom of Morocco. May I request protocol to escort His Excellency? I invite him to address the General Assembly. In the name of God, the Compassionate and the Merciful, Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Kingdom of Morocco is a space of meeting and cooperation between Africa and the countries of the Islamic world as well as the countries of Europe and through them the rest of the world. Above all, this is because of the stability and the security of Morocco in a space that is in a period of ferment in security and political terms. It's also the case because Morocco has adopted a policy of economic openness and a policy of democratic values and also because of Morocco's commitment to facing international challenges. We are aware that this session takes place at a time when the international arena is marked by great challenges. These are challenges because of cooperation between various interests and different strategies. These lead people to take an immediate response rather than thinking. But despite of these difficulties in the situation, we also see that there are opportunities for cooperation and coordination. We are convinced that multilateral action is the most effective way of finding a response to contemporary challenges, the challenges that the world faces. The best thing is to join the capacity of each country together to face challenges such as climate change and to achieve sustainable development, as well as to deal with the flows of migration and security challenges, terrorism or violent extremism, human trafficking. All of these challenges require cooperation through a multilateral framework. We therefore have hopes that we can create an innovative system that can support the action of regional organizations as well as the United Nations in creating greater harmony and greater coordination so that we can face these various challenges and guarantee a better future for humanity. The multilateral action that we aspire to should also guarantee Africa the place that it deserves on the international stage. His Majesty King Mohammed VI has called from this high rostrum, indeed, to ensure that this organisation attaches all of the necessary attention to Africa's renaissance and to Africa's ambitions and to give Africa the opportunities that it deserves. The institutional family is also very important and we have a conviction that partnerships, be they bilateral or multilateral or regional, at African level should work through an African framework of South-South cooperation that is effective. We also need solidarity covering the areas of economic development, culture, religion, the environment and combating security challenges. The Kingdom of Morocco uses two-thirds of its foreign direct investment within Africa itself. We are the second largest investor in Africa. We encourage the private sector within Morocco to draw up projects within Africa helping with technology transfer 
and aiming to create a free trade area within Africa. Morocco is convinced that these kinds of agreement will open up new promising horizons for the African economy. They will make it the largest free trade market in the world. Multilateral action has the power to adapt to new developments. When we look at these challenges, we have to face security challenges, including terrorism. And we can do this through active and practical cooperation in a number of different ways. The action of the Global Counterterrorism Forum is important here. My country chairs that forum jointly with the Netherlands. And that forum will continue its action. The co-presidency of my country is a recognition of our efforts in this area. We have developed a global strategy, a strategy that is multidimensional in harmony with the United Nations global counterterrorism strategy while also including cultural, religious, social and human rights considerations as well as of course security. This national strategy extends across the continent now. According to the instructions of the King, His Majesty, King Mohammed VI, we have gone out to our brothers to help to secure the formation or the training rather of religious leaders and imams and to call for tolerance. The second part of our strategy aims to address the issue of migration and it does so through working with different countries. No country can face the challenges of migration alone. No country can work alone to provide a holistic response to this challenge. Morocco has been a pioneer in its national migration and immigration policy. It has a humane, practical policy, a responsible policy. In Morocco, in Marrakesh, for the first time in the history of the United Nations, the United Nations ratified a document, the Global Compact for Migration and, the in and other international agreements covering immigration. It wasn't a case of levelling accusations, it was instead a joint vision where each party could find its interests represented without them being stigmatised, without being reduced to stereotypes. But rather this was a question of having social governance that was more broadly spread, that was fairer and that was more humane and guided by a sense of joint responsibility. The Marrakesh Charter has therefore become an international reference on multilateral action on immigration and we should all work together to implement this document. Morocco has also worked in favour of immigration and this is part of the King's vision, King Mohammed VI, as an African leader on issues of immigration. Thus, in Rabat, the Moroccan capital, an institute was set up, an African institute, to consider the questions related to immigration and to deal with this subject on a scientific basis. We must also address issues of climate change. The COP22 summit, which took place in 2016 in Morocco, is another example of our commitment to facing the impact of climate change. Morocco has made commitments to facing the challenges that threat the environment, threaten the environment. 
the summit that took place allowed us, or allowed African countries in particular, to build their coordination in facing the impact of climate change. There were various initiatives, and among these were initiatives concentrating on sustainability, stability, and security. There was also the three S's initiative, led by Morocco and Senegal. This was an initiative bringing together 14 African states who came together to respond to three major challenges. They did this working to improve large spaces for agriculture coming to some more than 10 million hectares to guarantee opportunities for work, stability and a dignified life for the people living there. Human development and sustainable development are also important. And this is entirely in harmony with the 2030 Sustainable Agenda, Sustainable Development Agenda of the United Nations. This is a consistent and harmonized approach which allows all countries to achieve their development objectives through effective cooperation. Morocco is convinced that there is a need to meet our objectives at national level and therefore the King, His Majesty, launched a development model, a social justice model, which aims to reduce social inequality and to promote an economic system that is better developed. Morocco also launched a, a call at continental level to build capacity for sustainable development within Africa. And we're stressing the effectiveness of South-South cooperation in favour of development within Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the multilateral system that we aspire to also works to maintain international peace and security. Our organisation is indeed the very symbol of that international peace and security. Maintaining peace and stability is part of the vision within our kingdom. Since Morocco became independent, it has tirelessly supported the United Nations efforts for peace and security. Fifteen peacekeeping operations around the world on four continents in difficult circumstances. We have participated in these operations through the last 20 years by sending Moroccan forces, in particular in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and in the Central African Republic. With the same zeal, we have supported the response that has come in terms of preventive action above all when aiming to prevent conflicts and we've done this through the framework of the United Nations strategy in this area. Morocco has backed up this choice in financial and practical measures. As the President of the African Union's Peace and Security Council during this September Morocco will spare no effort in responding to the expectations of our African partners. Ladies and gentlemen, the lack of promising avenues in the peace process between Israel and Palestine is one of the major sources of preoccupation that we have. It also is a source of instability and tension in the Middle East. The Kingdom of Morocco is honoured to stand side by side with the Palestinian people. Above all, 
since King Mohammed VI is the president of the Jerusalem Committee coming from the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Morocco rejects any changes to the nature or status of the holy city. We reject the, is, we reject the settlement policy um, we don't think that any holistic and sustainable and fair peace can take place without the Palestinian people being able to enjoy their rights to a state with the capital in East Jerusalem. Ladies and gentlemen, multilateral action is not just an idea that shapes international relations, but it's also a state of mind. Therefore, we must use it to fight hate speech and speech inciting racism or intolerance. Such speech runs counter to ideas of peaceful coexistence, respect for human dignity and altruism. Morocco values its multifarious identity and it has faced hate speech and Islamophobia. Morocco was among the 90 states that were members and aimed to submit a resolution to the 73rd session of the General Assembly titled The Fight Against Hate Speech and Strengthening Dialogue Between Cultures and Religions. In this respect, I recall the historic visit made by His Holiness the Pope to Morocco this year, by Pope Francis. His Majesty the King Mohammed VI, as President of the Jerusalem Committee within the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, with His Holiness the Pope, signed a joint call on the subject of Jerusalem as a holy city and a meeting place between all of the monotheistic religions and also as a symbol of peaceful coexistence and fraternity. We are working seriously to find a genuine solution to the conflict and to the regional disagreements on the Moroccan Sahara. This question is one of unity and territorial integrity and sovereignty and Morocco's authority over its territory. Every country has the right and the duty to protect its citizens and its territory as well as its territorial integrity. The Kingdom of Morocco reiterates from this high rostrum that the initiative for autonomy that has been considered by the Security Council since 2007 in all of its resolutions is serious and credible and is the solution that would put an end to this artificial conflict. To this effect, we appreciate the efforts made by the UN Secretary General to help make progress towards a political solution that is realistic, practical and sustainable and based on consensus as is set out in Resolutions 2, 4, 6 and 8 of the Security Council from April 2018. The lamentable situation of the inhabitants of the Tindufa camp is a source of constant concern for us. We once again make a call to the international community to encourage the host country to take on its legal and humanitarian responsibilities and to register the inhabitants in this camp and to carry out a census of those inhabitants. Ladies and gentlemen, for more than 70 years now, the United Nations have made great progress in peace, development and human rights. Nonetheless, there remains much to be done. There are many challenges that we must face. 
in a modern, complicated context. We need to address the situation. We cannot maintain an old system in a world that has changed. Rather than weakening this multilateral system, we need to strengthen it so that we can end up with a new global system, a system that is fairer, that is more balanced, that is more human, that has greater solidarity, that doesn't treat lightly or in a superficial manner with what is happening. We have to use multilateral action. We have to use multilateral action in an innovative fashion that takes on challenges in a, banished, in a balanced way that allows Africa to take its rightful place in the international arena. We must work to include everybody and to work preventively through preventive diplomacy and through peaceful settlement of disputes. These are our ambitions and our objectives. We will continue to make these efforts to achieve our noble objectives. Thank you. May peace be upon you. Yes. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Head of Government of the Kingdom of Morocco, His Excellency Sadr Dean Al-Uthmani, for his statement, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.